would still describe myself as a, as a fairly staunch libertarian, um, sort of uh, meaning that I'm uh, uh, very much in, in favor of free market uh, economics, um, probably uh, quite a little bit more uh, liberal on most, uh, most of the social issues. Um, and um, and, um, and I, I believe basically that uh, individual freedom is, is very important um, and that we live in a world uh, in the 21st century where there will either be a lot more or a lot less and that, uh, that uh, it, the pol politics matter and ideas matter because uh, the choices people make will, will be of decisive importance in determining um, you know, how the 21st century is going to shape up. You know, the 20th century was sort of a great and a terrible century at the same time. And I think the 21st has, uh, has every indication of being far greater and far more terrible. Well, I think the alternative is just very ugly. And I think the alternative uh, to it is, is something where, um, you know, people's, you know, in a, in a, um, in a lot of contexts, people's, uh, people's personalities get distorted, uh, um, their views get stifled. Um, in an economic context, uh, prosperity gets destroyed, which you know, may not always seem to be that important to people, but I think in the long run does matter uh, a tremendous amount. And, um, and then I, I, I do think that, uh, that uh, you know, it, sort of, you know, the, sort of the extreme opposite to it is, uh, is just sort of this um, sort of um, incredibly violent sort of totalitarianism that we've seen you know, in the 20th century, both in sort of a in, in all sorts of different forms that it's taken, and uh, and that that seems to me is uh, is just uh, is just very very undesirable. And I, I you know it's and I, I, I do see them as being um, sort of diff different ends of a spectrum, um, and that to some extent we always we always need to uh, preserve uh, fight for individual freedom. I think that uh, there are obviously the U.S. There's a lot of people have a lot of freedom, and then at the same time there are a lot of ways in which it's not an entirely free country. And, um, and people tend not to be fully aware of the ways in which um, it is both very special and very free, as well as the ways um, in which it is not. I mean, people tend to just um, be very complacent and accept uh, whatever the status quo is as um, more or less uh, what the world's going to be like, uh, plus or minus 2% or whatever. And I think that the range of possibilities is just much greater. Certainly, there are many dimensions to it. Um, you know, the, the university uh, setting is one where I think um, a lot of important ideas are never even discussed. So it's not that you know once you have a discussion, you hear both sides. It's that you do not even have a discussion. And so there are there are um, topics, questions, debates that are that are not being not being had. And you could probably come up with an enormously long list of those, but uh, but it's but it's not entirely obvious what it is that's not being discussed and that maybe maybe is very important. You know, I think um, certainly uh, in the um, sort of one of my um, one of my uh, standard complaints in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, public policy sphere is that uh, we you know we have a semi-socialist healthcare system, which I think is extraordinarily broken, and people people don't realize just how bad it is and how. You know, people get these sort of very perfunctory checkups from doctors who are not really getting paid anymore. Um, you know, the tort law system has further constrained freedom. Uh, uh, we, we can't experiment with new drugs and new treatments for, for, uh, for, for ill patients. And so I think the sort of, the, the sort of is a counterfactual world where things could be vastly better. And, but it requires one to have a bit of imagination to see that. Mm -hmm.